video about knowing God versus knowing man, and why every religionist that I know of, and every armchair philosopher that I know of, some of them are the same people, <laughs> always fails at knowing God. And the reason why is as follows. What is God? In a sense, God is the source of the universe, that which animates all things and is all things. Okay, now religion, religion does not own God, and this is the problem with religion. Okay, I got in an argument on Facebook with a gentleman that insisted that I was a, a, a vowed Adventist. No, I'm not an Adventist. I follow an Adventist lifestyle as close as I possibly can, remaining secular, because the Adventist lifestyle is demonstrably shown to extend human lifespan and improve health. Now, let's get back into this. Why will religion take you away from God instead of delivering you to the knowledge of God? Or delivering the knowledge of God to you? And the reason why is because God transcends the true God, the God of nature, transcends humanity, transcends religion, transcends all man-made things, yet not he transcends it or it transcends it, but it is also present in all man-made things, though in a perverted state. So, many religions have universal truths, and I've been over these, I used diet as an example, okay? Now, if you're not seeking these universal truths, and this is why religion is limited, because religion gives you some of these universal truths mixed in with some cultural lies that are particular to that particular culture if you will, or things of that nature. So it takes you away from these universal truths. And, for example, in Judaism, Judaism started out with the universal truth of the diet in the Garden of Eden. And then it basically amended that a number of times, because after all, some people like meat, okay? So you have to change it to fit the culture as the culture develops. Now, in India, same deal, but then you start having nonsense about onions and things of that nature. So, you have to understand, these universal truths get perverted by the imperfect human mind. And that's why religion takes one away from God. Now, what about philosophy? Philosophy, more or less, has become religion. Everyone I know, besides myself, that studies philosophy especially armchair philosophers um, and academics. Academics actually are more to blame. They look through philosophy. They, they go through everything they can find until they find a philosopher that agrees with them. And then they latch on to that philosopher. That philosopher becomes their new messiah. And then they are usually disappointed. Now, one of the things this gentleman brought up was, because when he was explaining, you know, I'm an avowed Adventist and all this, blah, blah, blah. What the hell is a scientific pantheist? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that type of crap. I encouraged him to read The Golden Bow by James Fraser and The uh, Magic Liber ABA by Aleister Crowley. Now, what's the issue that he had? Well, Aleister Crowley apparently is an avowed Satanist. No, Aleister Crowley is not an avowed Satanist. But, even... But... You, Aleister Crowley sought that universal truth. In Magic Liber ABA, he explains that his system of magic is, well, he put, to he put to the scientific test what Jesus, Buddha, and Muhammad did, and the yogis, who did the same thing, and synthesized magic with a K on the end. That was his system. He perverted that. Thelema is perverted with a lot of Gnostic ritualism and stuff like that. Now, he perverted it through his own drug-addled mind, but the purity of the true path that he put forth is exquisite and should be read by all. Now, with James Fraser, James Fraser, he basically shows the universalities and the differences of all of the world uh, religions, or most of them, and this is magnificent for the time that he existed in, in the 19th century. And this is why I recommend these books, but people just don't grasp these things. And people like to presume that I believe this, or presume that I believe that. My true philosophy, and is there a philosopher that agrees with me quite a bit? Yes, Ragnar Redbeard. 
Does that mean that I do what Ragnar Redbeard says to do? Absolutely not, because this is not the time nor the place for that. And that's the thing, is what people don't understand, people have lost the ability to think for themselves. So what they do, they don't want to believe that the government or the church is thinking for them, so they adopt other concepts. They'll adopt a philosopher, and then they'll have that philosopher think through them. Having dead people think for you is a very big mistake, because if they did not change the world a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago, they're not changing it now. And if you want to change your world, you have to begin to think for yourself. And that's the whole thing. You have to change your outlook. Now, what's my view about um, another person? Mis misperceived, thought that I was obsessed with Argentina because I promote justicialism. No. If anything, I like one Argentinian woman who happened to turn me on to justicialism, which I happen to agree with. And justicialism, if you look at justicialism, the 20 truths of justicialism, you will see that the political ideology of third positionism reaches its apex in justicialism. So long as you are not perverting your mind with cultural nonsense to think that only Germanic National Socialism fits Third Positionism, or only Italian Fascism fits Third Positionism. This is where the mind becomes perverted by uh, cultural differences and things like that. This is also why, um, for example, nationalism is a good thing. However, nationalism can be a very bad thing if it pollutes the minds of the higher-ups. The low-level people, the people that don't think to begin with, they don't matter. But the problem with philosophy and theology and all these big words with ology on the end of them is they become, they become a substitute for intelligence. And a lot of very intelligent people, some not so intelligent people, that populate the higher rungs of society in academia and things of that nature have polluted their minds with this and are now being told what to do by this religion or that philosopher or what have you. And this is a demented state of society and this is what removes us from the knowledge of God. And I will put links in the description. I do want people to follow them, but these are not so much proofs, but more thought-provoking links to encourage people to understand these things. There will be um, a link to Crowley's book, Liber ABA, Crowley's book on yoga, and The Golden Bell by James G. Fraser. But there will be other links, and I, I really hope people fo follow these links and start to open their mind. We must end the concepts of absolutism if we're to know anything. There is no, it's not either Apollo or Dionysus, as Nietzsche thought. It's not good or evil, as Zarathustra thought. There is a medium way, and there is a way that transcends human um, the human method of flawed thinking. And that is present in yoga, that is present in these religions, but it has to be teased out.